So we are back with a Monday morning video. This time it's the transit of Saturn in the nakshatra of Shravana. Saturn is in Shravana nakshatra since uh, mid of January or you would have started feeling the effects from first week of February roughly and uh, this will go on till the end of this year almost then Feb next year 2022. So the entire year Saturn is in Capricorn of course but within that he is in uh, Ravan Nakshatra which is ruled by Moon. It's a very beautiful Nakshatra. Baman Dev is linked to this Nakshatra incredible and this Nakshatra has a lot of lessons to be learned um, um, and there are a lot of life events which might uh, happen and uh, there are certain things which might have already happened and you might be wondering why it happened what did it mean <laughs> all right so we shall discuss these uh, events or probably these uh, in short today and as usual if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit or career or your marriage or your health or your spiritual life then please go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look for him and you will find him and especially uh, now is a very good time find god <laughs> all right so Saturn is in Capricorn. Capricorn is the own sign of Saturn. And, uh, Saturn is extremely uh, powerful there. What does it mean when you say Saturn is powerful? Many times people think YouTube, they have this confusion. Not in astrology, but uh, people who are linked with YouTube astrology, they have this confusion. Which one is better? Is a good Saturn better or a bad Saturn better? Uh, which what or if you say a good Saturn is better than a bad Saturn, what does it actually mean to have a good Saturn? What does it actually mean? Now many times people think if Saturn is badly placed, suppose Saturn is in debility or Saturn is afflicted, Saturn is in Abhustana, then they think, oh, my life is going to be terrible, okay. whole life. Or if Saturn is well placed, suppose he is in a Kendra or a Decor or his known sign moves the corner or exalted or friend sign or with friends like you know Mercury and Venus then they think uh, wow this is the best thing to have and then we will have no problems in life just great and perfect okay so this is what they think and none of these things are actually true what actually is true is that the truth of course it is it's great to have a good Saturn compared to a bad Saturn. There is no doubt about it. But what does it mean when you say that you have a good Saturn? Because now Saturn is in Shravana, but he is also in Capricorn. Okay, so that's the sign which is the own sign of Saturn, which shows high awareness. So when you say a planet is well placed sign-wise, it means the awareness related to those uh, things which that planet represents. Okay? Those things, the awareness is very high, which means um, the universe has blessed you because of your past good karma uh, to be aware of those things which are um, required to make positive changes in that particular direction. For example, if you are an Aries lover, then Saturn is your 10th floor and your 11th floor. Okay, so now he is the 10th floor transiting your 10th house. Okay? 11th floor transiting your 10th house. So a great placement as per transits, of course. And then um, this means that anything to do with career, 10th house, you know, or name, fame, power, position, or control, administration, authority, uh, leadership basically, and 11th house, which is finance and gains of any sort. Uh, these, these areas, uh, it's a good time to be taking positive steps in that direction. Why? Because now you will naturally be more aware of what are the things that I should do which can give me benefit in the long run okay so but that does not mean that you will not have any struggles or you won't have any challenges or you will not face any difficulty irrespective of the fact your saturn is good or bad you will always face difficulties during adasha the dasha of saturn okay irrespective of either it's in 10th house 8th house lagna or whichever house or it is exalted debilitated or multiple it's an enemy sign wherever it is okay? 
or afflicted or with friends. Either ways. Why? 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 Because Saturn is the Karaka for the 6th, 8th and the 12th. Okay? He is the prime Karaka for the Busa houses. Okay? And therefore, you have to understand, when Saturn Dasha comes, say, Anta Dasha, Maha Dasha, Pratyanta, then you will get a flavor of the Dusthanas. It's very important. But now because it is in Capricorn, your awareness is very high in order to go through it. <laughs> but this awareness will hold true uh, depending on your chart in whichever nakshatra Saturn is transiting in, okay? in your bhav chart of course. But now we see this transit is happening in Shavar nakshatra. So what is the nakshatra of Shavan? Shavan nakshatra, at a lower octave you can say, it shows, you know, like uh, hearing, listening. Okay. But uh, that's like at a lower octave. But at a higher octave, what does it mean? It, higher octave, it means, you know, listening to divine sound vibration. As the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nityam Bhagavat Sega. Bhagavatir Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtiki. This is what the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam says. Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu. That all the, almost all the impurities. Nashta Prayeshu. Prayeshu means almost. And Nashta means the destruction of all the, uh, Abhadreshu means impurity. Okay? Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sega. Nityam means every day. Every main moment, actually, yeah. uh, without fail, consistently. Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. Bhagavat Sevaya means when you listen to the divine sign, sound vibration of the Shiva Bhagavatam. Okay. So, this at the highest level refers to uh, listening spiritual knowledge. Okay. It's very uh, interesting if you check uh, the Capricorn where Shava Nakshatra falls. Jupiter actually gets uh, debilitated in the sign of uh, Capricorn. Okay. This is one of the reasons why. Because if Jupiter in Capricorn might represent that you need to hear a lot. Okay. Your awareness is not that developed. So you need to uh, go to that standard, which is like Nityam Bhagavat Sevya. Nityam, every day. It's not like Sagittarius or Pisces. You, know. you have to do it every day because it is a debility. Okay. Therefore, uh, Shava Nakshatra has lower octaves, higher octaves, and this is the highest octave that I'm telling you. Okay. Now at a lower octave, at a practical level, uh, when you talk on a materialistic sense, what it could mean? It could mean that there is somebody who you might have to listen to. There is somebody who you need to hear. For example, if that is your seventh lot, then it could happen that uh, you have to hear something from your spouse. Or it could happen that... Um, the other party is telling something, could be your business partner or your collaborator. They are telling you something repeatedly from long time, but you are not hearing. But now it could happen that that's where you have to make a decision that now will I, now will I hear this person or that person will be forced to make a decision. Okay. For example, if uh, Saturn is your seventh lord, it means you are Leo or a Cancer. Like now it could happen that your spouse is wanting uh, you do something for a long time. And now if you do not do that or you don't behave in a particular way, um, if you don't listen to them, then it would happen they might say, uh, yeah, I will, I won't uh, stay with you or I want a divorce, something like this. Okay, I mean in worst case extreme situation this could happen. So this could be something very minor, you know, why don't you do this, why don't you do this, why don't you do, do this. If you, you are fed up of listening and then you decide to. Okay. So, and if uh, Saturn is your 10th lord, then your boss, boss might say like that okay, in the office. And yeah, so therefore, uh, it's important that you understand and acknowledge what, what people are telling and what, what are the things that are going around you. And you see, Shava Nakshatra is also related to uh, Lord Vamandev. As I said previously, so Vamandev and Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj had taken a vow that I'll give three steps of land to Bali Maharaj, uh, to Vamandev. This is there in the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, the eighth canto. So, um, eighth canto is a very interesting canto. It contains a lot of things about uh, the eighth house actually. Because Bali Maharaj, he lost everything and he gained a uh, lot of things back. 
which is the eighth house and the eighth house is like uh, transformation reversal bouncing back okay. so therefore it's crucial that we understand what uh, the eighth house is when you understand uh, when you try to understand this uh, story of bali maharaj and you know vamadev so this is also a good time to take vows so for example if uh saturn is your lagna lord then you can take a vow that you know i will improve my life because the lagna shows all the houses the okay, lagna is the sum total of all the houses so every area of life you might need to improve if you are a capricorn or if you are an aquarius okay and you might have to take some level of responsibility okay. or if saturn is your seventh lord then it could happen that you take vows of marriage you might get married okay or if it's uh, you know the fifth house you know then it could happen that you are taking vows related to your children or you know that i will do this for my child you know i will do this for my son for my daughter okay? nine thousand parents okay? or it could happen that you may not want some responsibility but it could come of its own accord okay? if saturn is your ninth lord it could happen that you know, something to do with your parents you know some responsibility you have to take you know, maybe uh, they are having financial difficulties and you might have to support them or maybe maybe it could happen that uh, the health is not good and you have to support them at this age okay so there are many things which could happen the third house it could show that you might have to support your siblings you know your elder brother elder sister they might need your help to get something done and what that will be that will depend on your dasha so for example you know, if you are uh, If you're running the dasha of the second house, then you are you not know, focused on your married life or your business. So seventh house also shows business. So then, if suppose Saturn is your third lord, and because he's transiting Shravan, then it could happen that um, you might be doing your business, you might be focusing there, and you might uh, your father or your mother may tell you that you know, why don't you bring your brother or sister, younger brother, younger sister, into your existing business. Okay. why business because you are running the dasha of the seventh house okay. or it could be anything depending on what your dasha are indicating okay. if it's 10th house then it could be your own company your own profession it could also be self employment okay. and if it is you know like the ascendant it could be something related to your body or you know, it could be you yourself who tell something to others you know that you should do this you should do that you should be like this, you should not be like that okay. so if it's the 11th house it could mean that saturn uh, is wanting to tell you that you know, listen to your friends listen to your elder siblings okay? so those mother you know all the houses right so check which house is saturn rules in the chart and depending on that you will be uh, you might have to take some responsibility you might have to take some uh, vows okay and uh, we know the story of uh, bali maharaj that he lost uh, he wanted to become indra the king of the heavens but he could not become in this manvantar and therefore now uh, bali maharaj had taken those three steps okay so it could happen when shravana nakshatra comes always three is in limelight which means suppose um, your 10th lord is saturn and now saturn is transiting shravana nakshatra so it could happen that you might be getting a new job offer from three companies it could happen or if saturn is your seventh lord you might be getting three proposals for marriage then you have to decide which one uh, you would like to acquire okay. or if it is your you know fourth house you may like property in three locations okay. but where will you buy which one will you buy that will depend on your dasha so for example if uh, your saturn is your fourth lord and you are uh, because it's transiting in shravan so you might have an option to stay at three different places But suppose you are running the dasha for natural benefit, like Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Moon, then you will likely to end up choosing the location which is in a good posh locality. But if you are running the dasha of like Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, then what happens is uh, that you might be uh, taking a property which is you know in a bit secluded place, which is not very developed. Okay, but you might get three options. So which one you finally decide where you end up ultimately at the end of the day. that depends on your individual dashas okay your own horoscope and uh, to what extent is the promise there in the dashas just just because you are uh, so suppose if you are a uh, aries lagna and uh, for all the aries like 1 by 12th of the entire world population roughly will be aries so for all the aries 
Saturn is in the tenth house, tenth lord in tenth. Okay, so will it mean that they will all get three job offers? No, not necessarily. Or it could happen that you might get one job offer, but but there could be three rounds. You know, for example, you know there are three interviews, or you know there are three tests which you have to give. Or it could happen that uh, you wanted to do something, but you could not do it, so you are called back again. Okay, or it could happen that you know you get something and then you lose, and then you get something else. So it could happen that you are expecting that I'll get the promotion in this place, uh, but then Bali Maharaj went to Sutal okay, instead of uh, going to Swarga, which is an underwater uh, heavenly planet. Okay, and it is also known as Bila Swarga, which means it's much more opulent than Swarga itself. So it could happen that you are expecting some uh, something if Saturn is your tenth lord, or, you know, second lord, sixth lord, eleventh lord, you know, because these are money houses. And then you are expecting that yes, I'll get this promotion now. The stars are indicating. But suddenly they call you and say, no, we are planning to uh, give you a leadership role not in this office but in another city, you know, another place. Okay. So because Bali Maharaj had to go down to Sutala to uh, rule. Okay. And it could happen that uh, Bali Maharaj was promised by uh, Baman Dev that yes, in the next Manvantara, okay, uh, one day of Brahma has 14 Manus, okay, 14 Manvantaras, they rule for 71 Divya Yugas each. And one Divya Yuga is combination of, you know, Kali Yuga, then Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, Sakti Yuga. This is one uh, Divya Yuga actually. So 71 Divya Yugas like this, they make up for. Uh, sorry, 71 of these Divya Yugas, they will make up for one Manvanta. Okay. So four cycles, 71, they make up for one Manvanta. And for one Manu, uh, what happens is, uh, there, is a, there, there is a set of Devatas. So for one Manvanta, there is, you know, one Indra, one Chandra, Varuna, Vayu, Agni, and all this. And then after 71 Divya Yugas, there will be another set of then the Indra will change. So the current Indra of this Panvanta, his name is Puranda. And Bali Maharaj was promised by Lord Ramandev that you in the next Manvanta will become Indra. You will be in the same place where the current Indra is. And till that time, you will go to Sutala. Yeah. And he said, uh, Yes, and the third boon that he got, first was that next Manvantar will be in the second was that now you will go to Sutal, which is a very, very amazing place. And the third is um, that I myself, I will give, be a doorkeeper or a, or like a police man in front of your, uh, in Sutala Loka, okay? And uh, I will protect you from other demons there. Therefore, it's uh, it's a very interesting thing, you know, Shravana, it could happen that you might, uh, and the most important thing in Shravana is to take guidance, is to listen from your gurus, your guides, your mentors, your counselors, that is the most important thing. Nothing can replace gurus, mentors, or guides, nothing can just, you know, it's, it's way beyond imagination, because Shravana Kshatra can sometimes force you to listen to somebody, okay, if the dashas are not good, okay. If your dasas are good, then you'll happily listen, because they say there are uh, three categories of people. You know, actually four. Yeah. One first category is one who is most intelligent. Uh, who is that? Uh, who falls in that category? Intelligence doesn't mean the way you can, you know, cram knowledge. That's not intelligence. Intelligence uh, in this context means that a uh, first-class person he can he, uh, understand things just by listening. Okay. Like, for example, the Bhagavatam says, you know, like uh, intoxication, that's prohibited. You shouldn't do that. Your life will be ruined. Then you listen and you understand, okay, I should not be going towards, you know, alcohol, drugs, smoking, all this. Then the second class. Second class, uh, they don't understand by listening. They think that, yes, this has happened. Uh, this is what is said, but I kind of don't believe it. So then the second category, they look to other people. They say, oh, this person used to drink. His liver is gone. Okay. So then that means if I drink, I'll also be in trouble. So that's second class. And then there's third class. <laughs> third class means I have heard. I don't believe it. I have seen others. They are miserable. I still don't believe it. Maybe it will not happen to me. I will be an exception. And then 
they indulge in it and they get the beatings they can get the kicks slaps and then they understand by experience okay. and then there is fourth category fourth class fourth grade who is this fourth grade uh, category of people they have listened they have seen they have experienced still they are not having the sense control to stay away from wrong activity as in hindi they say na hum kabhi nahi sudhrenge it is that category of people and this category they have no future in spiritual life okay, because they are they are so helpless they are like uh, they are running behind uh, the same thing for, which made them miserable okay it's uh, very rare that uh, they will improve themselves because that can happen of course if some great soul decides to bless them or pray for them or they get the association of a great mahajan like uh, narad muni or even on a contemporary day you know, some great uh, sadhu then their lives might change otherwise they will remain the way they are okay so best is if we fall in the first or second class category okay which means we hear from the gurus and then we know what is good and bad for us what is right and wrong or in worst case we see others those who are not following the word of the scriptures how they are suffering how miserable they are in their life okay as lord krishna says ya shastra vidmusridya vartate kama kalata nasa siddhim mavapanoti na sukham na param gatim that uh, one who derides the word of the scriptures does not attain happiness this or in the next neither is he ever happy that's what lord krishna is telling okay nor does he attain perfection of life so therefore it's very essential that we read the bhagavad gita and the shrimad bhagavatam and we listen to our gurus regularly okay and if you are confused in a particular area of life then you can always go and you know take guidance from some counselor or some a guide or some coach in that particular area okay then you will be having the right direction in life right thank you very much for your patience and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down below god is there with you all the time just look for him and you'll find him and some other videos on saturn and shravana nakshatra i'll put them here don't miss channel and please